Hi, my name is Tim, and in this video, I'm going to guide you through the proper procedure for diagnosing a faulty start capacitor on the heat pump simulator. Now, this is the start capacitor right here, and it's in series to the start winding of the compressor and provides starting assistance for the compressor. And if it's not functioning, well, the compressor's not going to be able to turn over. It'll try to start on the run winding, but it wouldn't engage its start winding because this capacitor is in series to that. So we're going to begin at the thermostat and turn it to call for heating. Now click on the selector switch and that'll turn it to heat. It'll also turn up the temperature setting so you won't need to mess with these arrows right here. Click OK on the procedure guide at the top and next we're going to assess which loads are operational. We're going to start at the indoor unit and we can see that the indoor fan is in fact running so we're going to click yes. Now on our outdoor unit, is the outdoor fan operational or running? Well, it is. We can see that from the spinning blue arrows that the outdoor fan is running, so we're going to click that yes. Now it appears that the compressor is not running, so we're going to click no. But it may be cycling on locked rotor amperage, so we're going to need to check this with a clamp-on ammeter. So click OK on the procedure guide and take your clamp-on ammeter and place the jaws of it around the common wire of the compressor which is this glowing orange hotspot right here. And when we do that, we can see that we have zero amps here, but then it goes to 30 amps for just a brief second. This is the locked rotor condition of the compressor. It's attempting to start on one of the windings, but it's not able to turn over. So we need to investigate a few problems here. Now for one, let's look at the wiring diagram. It's possible that we have an open winding in the compressor, but it's also possible that either one of the capacitors is faulty or we have a set of potential relay contacts that are faulty. All of these devices are in series to the start winding. So we're armed with four possible causes, the compressor motor, the start capacitor, the run capacitor, or the potential relay. Now we're gonna to need to check each of these components, and it doesn't matter what order we do them in, but we're gonna be measuring capacitance and resistance. So we need to turn the power off. So click the handle on the disconnect and turn the power off, then click OK in the procedure guide. Next, we need to discharge both capacitors. We're going to start at the start capacitor, click discharge, and we have a convenient little discharge tool that's very inexpensive that you can pick up. I don't suggest discharging with a screwdriver. I know that's commonly done, but you do run the risk of damaging the compressor terminal with that arc. Click OK on the procedure guide, and next we're going to discharge the run capacitor. And again, once we've done that, we can isolate them. Now, the capacitors could hold a charge when the power is shut off, so it's definitely going to be necessary to discharge them. After we've done that, click OK. And our next step is to disconnect the wire from the potential relay. We're going to check that first. So we're going to click OK, and we're going to take our own meter. Now, the potential relay has normally closed contacts. Let me show you what I mean. If we look at the wiring diagram, we can see these contacts right here between terminals 1 and 2 are in the closed position uh, when the power's off. So with the power off, we should read zero ohms of resistance across this if it's good. So we're going to start by placing the leads across terminals 1 and 2 to verify the position of those contacts. And we do, in fact, have zero ohms, so our potential relay checks out here. So click zero on the procedure guide, and our next step is to proceed to the capacitors. We need to disconnect those or isolate them in order to measure capacitance value. So we're going to click on this wire right here to disconnect it from the capacitor. Click OK. And we're going to start by measuring the microfarad value of the star capacitor. Now, the star capacitor should measure 200 microfarads with this particular capacitor. Now, you can look right on the side of the capacitor. There's typically a label on there that will give you the proper value of that capacitor as well as the voltage value. So we're going to place our leads across the two terminals on that capacitor and see if we've got 200 microfarads. And when we do this, we have zero, which indicates we have a faulty start capacitor here, and it's going to need to be replaced. So we're going to click no on the procedure guide that we didn't measure 200. We're going to click on that start capacitor, click replace, and once that problem is fixed, it's going to be necessary to reconnect everything securely and turn the power back on. Once you do that, you want to observe one full cycle of operation to make sure all loads are operating properly. Pull the indoor air filter to see if it's dirty, and if it is, replace it. Last but not least, we need to go up to the residence and make sure heat is being delivered. And we can see from the graphic at the floor register here that it in fact is. 
Now, if you have any questions on this process of diagnosing a faulty star capacitor, simply click on this top left icon and you can review each steps in the procedure. Good luck on all your future service calls and I'll see you back here soon. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Watching videos is great, but nothing beats actually doing. Head over to interplaylearning.com to try these sims for yourself in 3D and virtual reality with a free trial.